this morning. Now, the company is hot on the heels of SpaceX in the satellite market following the closure of its reverse merger with a SPAC, Vector Corp. Joining us now, Peter Beck, Rocket Lab founder and CEO, along with Bloomberg's uh, space expert, for TV, Ed Ludlow joining us as well. Hey, Peter, congratulations. I know it's wicked late uh, where you are right now, so we very much appreciate uh, your time today. What is the potential that you see in the used satellite, in the used rocket market, which you vowed not to ever get into? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, look, I mean, first off, we're super excited to bring, you know, a really high quality space asset to the markets. Um, there's really only been two private companies in, in the history of space flight that have delivered regular and reliable launch, and they've been SpaceX and us, Rocket Lab. So we're the second most frequently launched US rocket today with over 100 satellites delivered for our government and commercial customers. And we're not even stopping there. We have a new launch vehicle in development, as you alluded to, uh, the neutron vehicle that is even capable of, of carrying crew. But I mean, I think a lot of people forget that we're not just a launch company, we build satellites too. Um, we have uh, multiple missions and our team is flat out building uh, two satellites to go to Mars for NASA, one satellite to go to the moon, and we already have two of our own satellites uh, on, on, on orbit already. So what we're trying to build here as a company is, is really that gen generational leader in the space industry. Um, and it's just exciting to bring this, this, uh, this company for the, for the public to be able to participate in now. Peter, this is a crowded field. Let's be honest, SpaceX leading the way, Blue Origin wants in, Firefly, you guys, Rocket Lab. How much money can you actually make here? Elon Musk talks about the launch side of his business topping out at $3 billion a year. How much money can you actually make launching rockets into space? Well, this is the great thing. I mean, if there is, a, there is a lot of emerging and aspirational competition, but actually there's only two companies that are delivering regular and reliable access, and that is SpaceX, as you pointed out, and, and us. That's the wonderful thing about Rocket Lab is we're not just a launch company. Uh, we're an end-to-end -end space systems company. We build satellites, we provide satellite components, we build rockets, and ultimately we'll provide applications from orbit as well. So our, you know, our, our business and our business plan is, is very well diversified over the whole space sector. So where does the profit come from? Can you actually make money on the launch side of the business or are those next stage projects, a lot of it around data that you alluded to, is that where the money is to be made? Yeah, look, I mean, the launch market is around about a $10 billion market um, and we've been the market leader in small launch there for, for now three years. Um, the satellite market is around about a $20 billion market. Uh, but the, you know, the space data market is a $320 billion market. So that, that is a very significant market. And uh, our, our view is that you know, if, if you own your own rocket, you own your own launch pad, you can build your own satellites in a very, very unique position to be able to build that space infrastructure and really deploy that. And today, there is really only one other company that has the ability to do that other than us. Hey, Peter, who are your customers, whether on the launch side or the data side? So, I mean, our customers are diversified around about 50% government and 50% commercial. I mean, uh, we've flown missions for the most discerning customers like uh, the, the NRO, the National Reconnaissance Office. They are the top of the top customers. Uh, obviously, uh, NASA as well, we've flown multiple times. And foreign governments, foreign companies, multiple missions for Japan and Germany. Uh, so you, you name it, we've, we've flown just about everything you can imagine. But generally, our mix is 50% is government and 50% commercial. Peter, you've raised more than $750 million through this SPAC transaction. What are you going to spend it on? Well, look, we have the Neutron program, which is, uh, which is a vehicle that is a, a large launch vehicle designed to carry eight tons to low Earth orbit in a fully reusable fashion. Uh, it's also designed to carry crew. Uh, and that will be a direct competitor uh, you know, to, to, you know, to, the, to the current standing in the marketplace. Uh, we also have uh, a very uh, strong inorganic growth strategy. I mean, we made our first acquisition last year uh, that has worked out incredibly well for us. Um, you know, that was a, a satellite components company, and we have many more of those uh, to come. Uh, but also, it's important in this industry, uh, I think there's, there, it, you know, there is going to be some consolidation here. Um, and uh, we're making sure that we're in the prime position to do that consolidation. So give me a sense of your company as a real player, Peter. How, what's the dollar value of the contracts that you already have? How much revenue do you expect to bring in next year, the year after? Well, this is the one, one of the, the, the discerning factors between us and, and many of the other uh, you know, launch companies that are out there is we actually have revenue. Um, you know, we've booked over $100 million worth of small launch revenue alone. And if you look at our projections, 
uh, through, through the SPAC material, you will see that um, our, our revenue becomes quite diversified as we layer in more and more space systems revenue building satellites and, and, uh, and, and so forth. But in all of, our, all of our projections to date, it does not include any of the, the space data. This is just the bread and butter business that we operate today. Uh, Peter, final question from me. Um, you're in Auckland, so it's like 2 a.m. where you are. Are, are you going to have to move your headquarters? You have to be somewhere else <laughs> to really take advantage of all the demand that's going to come down? Well, look, no, we, we are a U.S. company. Headquarters is up in, in Long Beach. Um, you know, it's just uh, I'm, I'm down in New Zealand uh, at this point in time, but uh, there was a very large team in, uh, in, in our headquarters in Long Beach. We also have a launch pad in Virginia, uh, operations in Canada, and operations in New Zealand. So we're a global company. 